Hi everyone, welcome to our video lecture for section 11.1 .1 on approximating functions with polynomials. In chapter 10, we were focusing on determining whether series were converging or diverging, but now for chapter 11, we're going to be shifting our focus and instead take a look at examples where series are used, specifically how they can be used to approximate elementary functions. To motivate this topic, I want you to remember the concept of linearization back from your calculus one days. Recall that linearization was a process of approximating a nonlinear function by a linear function at a specific point. This is what allowed us to make estimations on a function based on a linear function that we were able to obtain based on the slope of the tangent line at a point and some other known function value at some a. Well, all that we're going to be doing in this section is expanding on this idea, although we will be greatly expanding on this idea. All right, so to begin here, let's consider the elementary function e to the x. And let's say that we wanted to approximate the function values near a point, let's say in this case, a equals to zero. So near a equals to zero in this region here, put here a equals to zero. Well, we get to see here that near a equals to zero, the function e to the x looks pretty much just like a line. So how did we get this line? Well, in order to get this line, well, we needed to remember what is the equation for a line. And we know that the equation for a line is given here by f of x minus f of a is equals to f prime of a times x minus a. Now, to be more precise, is the equation of a line tangent to a particular point, tangent to a. And you, this formula may seem familiar, maybe not. I would argue that we've seen it quite a bit of times because this is the same thing as y minus y1, which is equals to the slope times x minus x1. You might have seen this form back in your pre-calculus days. Now, if we go ahead and evaluate the function at a, now in this case, I said that the a is a zero. So the equation for this line then would be f of x minus f of a. So the function e evaluated at zero. And this one here is equals to the slope, which is the derivative evaluated at our point a. Now the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. So evaluating the derivative at a is the same thing as evaluating a to the zero once more times x minus zero. Now what does this give us? Well, we get to see here that we get f of x minus one is equals to one times x. Simplifying a little bit more, we're gonna get that f of x is equals to one plus x, which is exactly what we had here. So this was the process of linearization. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cancel this. I'll just put here linearization. And again, this idea here only work whenever we were near an A value of our choosing. I mean, if we focused at some other A value, let's say right over here, then near this point here, then yes, the curve behaves just like a line. Nonetheless though, this approach here is somewhat limited because the further away that we get away from our A, our point of our choosing, well, you see here that our approximation starts to fall apart. Right over here, as soon as I get, I mean, right over here, it seems somewhat accurate, but anything past this point, yeah, it's not accurate at all. Well, we can actually increase the accuracy of our approximations by simply incorporating more terms with higher powers. And we get to see here in the next graph that we have the e to the x, but now if we try to make some approximations now with a quadratic, well, it seems like we are getting better approximations near, in this case, our a value of zero. It's looking better, and if we go ahead and increase the number of terms and powers, it seems like our approximations are getting better and better. Now, the last one here is an approximation with a quartic polynomial, and you get to see here that, hey, yeah, near our a value of zero, now we're getting much better approximations here. And this will be the goal for this lecture to make polynomial approximation for other functions. So let's take a look at some definitions. The special polynomials that we're gonna be using to approximate a function are known as Taylor polynomials. So let's see, what is a Taylor polynomial? Well, if f has n derivatives at a, then the polynomial p sub n of x is equals to the function evaluated at a plus the first derivative of the function evaluated at a times x minus a, plus the second derivative evaluated at a over two factorial times x minus a squared, plus the third derivative evaluated at a over three factorial times x minus a cubed. And we continue on with this pattern all the way to the nth derivative evaluated at a over n factorial 
times x minus a raised to the n. So it seems like you're starting off here with the original function, then you go ahead and take the first derivative, and for every term, you go on and increase the number of times you're taking the derivative, and you're dividing by whatever number of derivative you're taking over that factorial. So first derivative, one factorial, second derivative, two factorial, but also you're multiplying times x minus a raised to, again, however number you've been taking the derivative of. Now, this one here is called the nth order polynomial for f at a. Okay, now you can easily go ahead and write this one here in notation, in summation notation, but a lot of times I'm just going to go ahead and expand them out like this. Now, notice here that we have an x minus a every time. However, if you're focusing on the value for the function or the approximation at a equals to zero, that's a special Taylor polynomial known as the Maclaurin polynomial. Now I also want to point out here that at x equals to a, the value for the polynomial will be exactly the same as the value for the function. Now as we move further from a though, then these values will begin to diverge and that's where our approximations are going to be losing some of the accuracy. Okay, so let's go ahead and practice here with our first Taylor polynomial to see if we can go ahead and make polynomial approximations for the function e to the 2x. And we want to see if we can find out a linear approximation, a quadratic approximation, and lastly, a quartic polynomial approximation. Now we're going to be centering at x equals to 0. Now if we're centered at x equal to 0, again, that just means then that our a value is 0. Now we know that the a value is 0 because they're telling us that we're being centered at 0, so a is the center. Okay, now since for this problem we're going to be taking a look at the quartic polynomial, in other words, the fourth order, then I'm just going to go ahead and create the general form for this fourth order polynomial. So I'm going to have here p sub 4 of x is going to be equals to f at a plus, now we take the first derivative, f prime at a divided by 1 factorial. If you wanted this one here, you could just also set 0 factorial times x minus a to the first power plus, now we go for the second derivative evaluated at a all over 2 factorial times x minus a squared plus the third derivative, which I'll write here with different notation, f parenthesis 3, third derivative evaluated at a times x minus a now to the third all over 3 factorial plus, last but not least here, the fourth derivative evaluated at a times x minus a to the fourth all over 4 factorial. Now this is the general form, however, since we're dealing with a polynomial approximation centered at a equal to zero, then that means that we're dealing here with a Maclaurin polynomial, so I'm just going to go ahead and simplify this one here a little bit more and I'm going to go ahead and plug in the a value of 0. So let's see, what are we going to get? So our fourth order Maclaurin polynomial is going to be p sub 4 of x is equals to f of 0 over 0 factorial plus f prime of 0 times x over 1 factorial. And I'll put the 1 here because it's the first power. Again, first derivative over 1 factorial. Then second derivative evaluated at 0 times x squared over 2 factorial plus third derivative evaluated at 0 times x cubed over 3 factorial and last term, fourth derivative evaluated at zero times x to the fourth over four factorial. So that's essentially what we're going to be looking for. Ultimately, we're also going to be finding the quadratic and the linear approximations in a second, but this is the farthest that we're going to be going. Alrighty, so now we need to, now that we have the format here, we need to f figure out the values. What is the derivative, or what is the function, first derivative, second, third, and fourth derivative evaluated at zero? So what I'd like to do for this problem is to essentially kind of create a table here. And on the left hand side of the table, I'm going to put in my function and my derivatives. So f was e to the 2x, then the derivative is 2 e to the 2x. Second derivative is 4 times e to the 2x. The third derivative is 8 times e to the 2x. And the fourth derivative is 16 times e to the 2x. So now that I figure out the derivatives, 
on the right hand side of the table, I plug in the a value. So I value it here at essentially x, which is the a at zero, then evaluating the function e to the 2x at zero, we're just going to be getting a one, and I'll put this one here, eh, put it in orange. So we get a one, then a two, a four, an eight, and a 16. Because again, e to the zero is just one. Okay, so now that we figure out the function values at a, we're ready to come up with our polynomial functions here. All right, so starting off at the first linear approximation, and I'll put it here. So for the linear approximation or piece of one or our first order approximation, and again, it's first order because we're only taking the derivative once. So then we're gonna have f of zero over zero factorial, but we know that f of zero was one plus the first derivative evaluated at zero, which was a two times x squared. Now again here, I want to emphasize guys that whatever we're getting for the function value and the derivatives evaluated at a point, those are telling us the coefficients. This one here was a coefficient for the normal function evaluated at zero. Then once we took the first derivative, it was giving us this coefficient. The second derivative gave us this coefficient. The eighth derivative gave us, well not the eighth derivative, but the third derivative gave us the eighth, gave us that coefficient. And at about last but not least here, the 16 was giving us a coefficient for the x to the fourth. Okay, so now that we got the linear here, let's go ahead and get the quadratic approximation. And this one here, it was going to give us a 1 plus 2, and I just realized that I went a little bit overboard. For a linear approximation, we just have an x to the first power. There we go, x to the first power here, first order. Now, Let's see, continue on with the quadratic, we're gonna have one plus two x plus, what is our next coefficient? Our next coefficient here is four times x squared. Now, I want you to be extra careful here because whenever we were encountering the first two terms, f of zero divided by zero factorial and f prime of z at zero evaluated one factorial, that was just one. So the zero order and the first order approximations, you don't need to worry about dividing by anything. But now starting up on the second order, remember we're dividing by whatever number of times we took the derivative, the number factorial. So we took the derivative twice. So we need to divide it here by two factorial. Now four divided by two factorial is gonna give us one plus two x plus four over two is just a two x squared. Okay, now last but not least here, the quartic approximation. So we're gonna have here a piece of four of x, and now we're gonna get here one plus two x plus, we know we had a two x squared, now plus the third order one here, uh, the coefficient was eight, but now we need to remember to divide this one here by three factorial, then it's an x cubed, plus the next coefficient here is 16, divided by four factorial, times x to the fourth. Now, it looks like I'm running out of space, so I'm gonna go ahead and make this a little bit smaller, guys. But we can go ahead and simplify this. I'll let you simplify it. Remember this one, three factorial is the same thing as three times two times one, and four factorial is the same thing as four times three times two times one. All right, and this is gonna give me here one plus two x plus two x squared plus four thirds x cubed plus two thirds x to the fourth. Okay. Now, this is our fourth order approximation for the function e to the 2x. Now, we want to put our approximation to the test. So, we want to go ahead and use the quartic polynomial to estimate the value of e. Now, we have to be careful for this one here because we have our quartic polynomial, but we wanted to figure out, okay, which x value should we plug in? And this quartic polynomial was approximating the function f of x e to the 2x. So, what we want to think about here is, well, what x value would I need to evaluate the function at so that if I have e to the 2x, I get in return an e to the one power. Well, you get to see here that if I wanted to get just an e to the first or just an e, then it looks like our x value has to be equals to one half. So going back to our quartic polynomial, what we wanna do here is we wanna see, okay, well, 
what is a quartic polynomial evaluated here at 1 half or 0.5. Now at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and use my calculator or Desmos. In fact, I'll use Desmos, I'll let you guys use your calculator because I also want to compare how does a quartic polynomial look like compared to the original function e to the 2x. All right, so here we have in green the original function e to the 2x and let's see how our approximations look like. If I go for the first order, the linear approximation here, well, we get to see here, yes, it's a line, but again, if I start to zoom in near our a value or our x value of zero, yeah, it is pretty much the same thing. Now, let's take a look at the quadratic approximation or the second order approximation. You get to see here that, okay, the quadratic is looking, it's, I mean, it's still pretty much the same thing here near the bottom, but not, I would say not that much changes. Comparing it to the third, Okay, it's looking a little bit better here. It starts to become flatter. The fourth order one here. And again, near the region where, or near the region of x equal to zero, it looks pretty accurate. So if I go ahead and figure out, okay, well, what is the polynomial approximation for the fourth order one? Well, we get a 2.708. Now the original function, the original value of e is about 2.7182. So, okay, it is a little bit accurate, but it could certainly be better. Let's see how those approximations compare to the first one. So first order, okay, so first order you see here is not too accurate, it's two. Second order, got 2.5. Third order, 2.6. Fourth order, there we go, 2.708. Now, as you can imagine, if we went ahead and took even more polynomial approximations, let's say that we went all the way to the 10th order, then it's gonna be looking much more accurate. All right, so returning to our notes, then our approximation was about 2.7083, and it was, keep on repeating, so 33, three, kept on going. Okay, so this is where we're gonna be stopping part one for our video lecture. We'll continue on with part two with many more examples. See you guys there.